Hi guys! So today I'm going to answer questions that you guys wrote to me in the comments of some of my videos that I thought were pretty good questions, so I'm gonna answer them for my 100 subscriber special. Stick around to the end of the video to see me lick Nepenthe's sap. So the first topic comes from someone named Carney Plant, and they wanted me to talk about the topic of light. So, um, I actually, I just grow in my greenhouse, as you know. So I don't really do anything special, I just let the sun do it. Um, I put shade cloth on in about April, and then I take it off in like October. I think I took it off in November last year, 2012. But um, yeah, so that's what I do for light. But I know some species are really sensitive to light and others are not so sensitive. Most of the species I keep don't even care about light, but some turn reddish even. So I think there's just one that does that. Well, there's another one that's just born purple, but yeah. Um, so that brings me to talk about my Aristolocuides, which is somewhere around here, right here. So Tijman131 wanted me to make a video about my Aristolocuides, and uh, I have been putting that off. You probably haven't seen it in videos since like October or something, because it either got overwatered or sunburnt or something. I think it was actually sunburnt. Um, at first I thought it was overwatered, but then I realized it was sunburned because the leaves were burned off. Um, so I guess it got too hot, and that kind of relates to the topic of light. So um, Aristolocuides is one that really cares about highlighting. It doesn't care for highlighting. It wants, like, you know, cooler light and everything, um, but still really highlighting conditions. It's dripping on me. Um, so this guy basically killed it. I killed one, the first growth tip. Then it put out like a really tiny leaf right there, leaf, leaf, oh well, yeah. And then the growth tip died, so then another came back, and then it died, and then another came back, and then it died, and then right here, uh, I'm not sure if you can see that, but there is a new little uh, growth point forming from one of the nodes on a few leaves back, the last healthy leaf, and um, there's also, I just noticed today, that there is a little growth tip coming up from the center. So that's like the third growth point, and hopefully I don't kill it again. But this should have two growth points if everything goes as well and planned and stuff. So our next question comes from Sir Wuffleson, and he asked how to make a Nepenthes cutting, and where you get the cutting from and care. I've actually never taken a cutting, and I think there are actually some videos uh, that are on YouTube that will explain that. So um, the only one that I could really cut is my Nepenthes Ventrata, which is behind me, right there, the big one. And I don't want to cut that because I want to make it a big bush, but once it outgrows the greenhouse, which is really sad because it just shows how small of a greenhouse I have, even though it's really big, um, once it outgrows the greenhouse, I'll cut it and make a cutting tutorial. Yeah. So another question from Tijman131, uh, he asked what kind of water am I using? And I use um, this stuff right here. This is Arrowhead distilled water, a 2.5 gallon jug from Safeway. And you should probably be able to find it at any grocery store actually. So um, yeah, that's what I use, just distilled water. Another question relating to water is, um, was left in a comment on my coffee tutorial video. And they wanted to know if they, well, if I have to use RO water or distilled water to make the coffee, and the answer to that is yes. Um, tap water can have like 700 uh, total dissolved solids rating or whatever. I, I don't have a TDS meter, but um, that it can be pretty high, and I don't even think coffee will make it go that high. It still keeps it low mineral. Um, if you water it with tap water and coffee, like you make the coffee in tap water, it will burn the roots, and I know that's kind of inconvenient because you're supposed to make coffee with distilled water, otherwise, like, uh, it will taste like really, no, you're not supposed to make it with distilled water, you're supposed to make it with tap water, did I say tap water or distilled water, but, um, you're supposed to make it with tap water, otherwise it tastes really bland, so it is kind of inconvenient, so you can't just, like, use the coffee that you make unless you make it with distilled water. This next question comes from Brad Taylor, and he said that he can't get his sphagnum moss to do much at all, and he asked, what can he do to help it grow? So, um, I think I made a care tutorial for sphagnum a while back, but I'm not sure if it was that good. Uh, I have all of my sphagnum growing in these little clear containers like this, 
Uh, and what I do, I just put some dead sphagnum on the bottom. I don't even use a fancy brand. I use Moss or Lee for, to pot everything. Like, I, I, I don't want to use the New Zealand stuff because it's like $17 for a bale that big. And this Moss or Lee stuff is a bale this big for like $3 from Home Depot. So um, it's a lot cheaper and it works just as fine. Um, I just put it on the bottom of the uh, culture and then I put like 10 or 15 strands of sphagnum on there and then I wait for about three months and it grows up. It doesn't really grow much in the winter but um, I think the main thing is to have it in actual sunlight. I noticed uh, when I grow it in high humidity like a terrarium or a closed box it grows like really thin and tall and it's weird so um i just grow it like low humidity makes it get like nice and puffy and stuff um but just make sure you have a water level in there to where it won't dry out um you want it like halfway up but if it goes above where the uh where the moss is growing then it will kind of like drown the moss and it will start to decay and then you'll have big patches where nothing will grow and that happened to me so I had to fix that and now I don't let them get too wet um so yeah another question relating to sphagnum from mole dim I, I'm not sure if I pronounced that right but um they asked if the relationship between sphagnum and nepenthes is okay and I use sphagnum to put on the top of the pot for nepenthes and sarracenia because uh, it, it helps like keep the moisture in so I don't have to water as much and it looks really nice so as you can see I'm just gonna grab this one right there and I think that moved the camera um, right here so you have like a ton of it and everything growing and it looks nice and just makes it look like, nice and stuff so yeah that's why I like it I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing this name right but it, uh, this question comes from someone named Zeke Z-E-I-Q-Q -Q. And they asked, um, what species of Nepenthes is the one with the very dark purple leaves? Yeah, they said purple. Um, so this one is one that I recently got. This is Nepenthes gracilima. And someone told me recently that it's actually a variant of Alba, Nepenthes Alba. And it, you can kind of see that because of tiny pictures, tiny peristome and everything. Oh, um, I think it really has like cute pictures and everything. But, um, when I got it, it's kind of like purpley green leaves, and then it got to purple, and now it has these bright red leaves. I'm not sure if that's just opening up a new leaf that happens, but it has a bright red leaf, and that's really cool. I've never really seen that before. Um, and it has that like golden little tip on the growth tip, so it's cool. Um, yeah. So Hobo Joe 308 asks, uh, did the greenhouse come with the shelves? Uh, no, it didn't. I made the shelves. Um, what I did, I had to go to Home Depot and I bought a bunch of 2x4x8s, but I planned this all out in advance and I made blueprints and everything and decided how big I needed each piece. And then I just went to Home Depot and I had them cut it. And then if something was wrong, I came home and cut it. But um, then I screwed everything together and I bought these wire shelves from, you can probably, I'm not sure, you can see them, probably. Uh, you can see these wire shelves that I got from Home Depot as well. Um, the ones that are spaced out, which I don't like as much, uh, these are $10, but this one back here, I accidentally bought this one instead of these my first time. This was the first shelf I made, and it turned out to be $20 per shelf. So I did 20 on the top, 20 on the bottom, and then for these I did 10 on the top and 10 on the bottom because I have two shelves on each. Um, the pros to this one is uh, the stuff doesn't like pictures won't fall through and form under and you can't get them out and uh, your other stuff it like the pots won't go crooked and everything you know um, so I made them uh, if you guys really want you can leave me a comment and I can make a video about the shelves and show you where I put everything together and stuff and I think I do have some pictures but not a lot and um, yeah I think that's about it regarding the shelves so Channel Badge, sorry if I pronounced your name wrong, but um, they said, nice moss, and I'm trying to grow some, but I left it out in the rain and it drowned. Um, I mentioned that earlier. Uh, that's a really important thing about growing sphagnum. If you get it too wet, um, little areas that it's lower uh, will form where 
uh, nothing will grow and it just decays. So it's hard to get stuff to grow there afterwards. So as you can see here, around the edges and everything, it's all growing up nice. But right here in the middle, uh, it is kind of, there's like little dead spots and everything where it won't grow. So the last question is more like a dare. Um, Fierce Deity, Fierce Deity, which is actually a boy. Uh, Fierce Deity 02. I don't know what a deity is. Is that like, I think that, isn't that like a goddess or something? I don't know. Um, so yeah, Fierce Deity, okay, I'm sorry, I went off on a little insulting thing about you. So Fierce Deity 02 says, uh, lick the sap, they're referring to the sap that was on my Ventrata that I showed in one of my videos. I did it in the past and it's not really bad. So I guess I will be doing that if I don't chicken out. So, um, the Ventrata is behind me, so I will stop the camera and move it over there and film myself licking it. So this is the picture with the most sap on it, and I guess right down there. Um, it had more, so I'm lucky. Uh, okay. It's actually kind of sweet. That would make great syrup. Hi, Tog. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, if I didn't answer a question that you have, leave it in the comments below. I answer all of the questions that are left, it, even the ones that I just answered. I answered all of them in advance. Um, and some of them were from like two months ago and stuff, so you know how crazy she is. So yeah, if you like this, then be sure to rate the video, favorite it, comment, and subscribe for more!